gang, what's good? Oh, long time no see. Long time no see. Let me know how the sound levels and stuff are, by the way. By the way. Because I, uh, I got the sound ducking on, but I don't want it to be so jarring. You know what I mean? I, but I just cracked open a beer. We're gonna, we're gonna do this thing. Hey, hey. See, now I'm, I'm down here. I don't have the big fancy welcome screen anymore, but I don't need it. Because all we're gonna do is paint. Um, I'm excited for a number of reasons. One, this is my first stream in like a long ass time. I mean, probably six, seven months. Maybe? I need to check. I need to check the times. But, yeah. Uh, pretty stoked about that part. But also, I'm excited because uh, we're, we're really digging in our heels to the old art thing. Let me, let me just bring up the old portfolio site. So, got a bunch of stuff going on. Um, yeah, comedyhobo.com is now just my art portfolio. I'm gunning for, for card art, illustrative art, working on tabletop games, working like, I don't know, stuff like Space Marine stuff right here, uh, more Warhammer, um, some gaming stuff, let's see, oh, War Machine, um, of course you can't go wrong with like, more Magic the Gathering stuff right here, and then I got uh, the Dungeons and Dragons book, so anything fantasy, art, sci-fi, hardcore, illustrative related stuff, that's what I'm gunning for. I'm hoping to get good enough to get some commission work in the next year or so with one of those bigger companies or even like an up-and-comer board game company I think that'd be a lot of fun uh, so I primarily do environment art I'm, I really like setting moods and doing lighting and volumes and structure uh, as you can see on the kind of a deal right here but yeah it's a full-on portfolio uh, that you can come and check out so every once in a while I'll do dedicated painting kind of show step-by-step -step processes pretty cool stuff um, I'm biased, of course, but pretty cool. And, you know, my Patreon's here, so if you feel saucy, you can sign up, get some true behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, we'll start doing exclusive videos. I'll be doing a mentor uh, session before too long. Uh, that's going to be really awesome. So that's a, that's a cool way to go about it. But also, I have uh, kind of my online store right here, just straight from here. You can go to Gumroad. Uh, all the stuff's right here. So if you want to know what brushes I use for Photoshop and I have tutorial packs and all that stuff. But enough plugging. Let's get to making. Let's get to making some art. What do you say? So I need to start focusing on character stuff. I feel okay about my environments. I still have a lot to learn. Make no mistake. But I feel okay about the stuff I'm learning and the pace that I'm going. But the one thing I need to work on are characters. And I thought a good way to kind of start going from that transition to environments to characters is work on something moody to where the character is part of the environment, but the character becomes the focus instead of the environment. And Warhammer Art does a great job of that, a really good job of it. And that's what we're going to look at tonight. I'm going to try to do something in the style of, I'm not going to just straight up copy something. Um, I, I just want to see kind of what the trends are. Um, some things that I might really like, so, you know, oh, Piotr is awesome. Um, so we're going to get some references. Um, so yeah, I'm just doing Google image search, so copyright stuff goes to all the creators. So uh, we're, we're actually going to look at this one real quick. Um, very cool. I mean, look at that. Like, I can promise you my art won't be this good, but it'll be a cool thing to kind of go off of. So let me go ahead and save that to the... Uh, That way we can still know who our references are. So that's a good one. I like that kind of looser, more loose style. Um, what's another good one? Yeah, something like this. I like this sort of, excuse me, this sort of gimmick. Sorry, I just started drinking beer, so it's gonna give me the hiccups. Yo! Okay. Music's a little loud, let's do that. Let's do that, how's that one? We'll crank it out, because I have sound ducking on, but with Ob Studio, sound ducking sort of... It can work sometimes and not work other times. But yes, let me know. Um, let me know, for sure. But what's up, Chris? It's good to see you. I'm glad you got to make it, my friend. You're going to laugh at me from all the uh, terrible 
Warhammer-esque art I'm about to do. Uh, but, but we'll get the references. We'll kind of see what we can get. It really looks like strong shapes. A lot of backlighting. Uh, that's one of the trends that I know. It's like, yeah, big moonlight right here. Uh, this dynamic sort of stuff. And like these big scenes right here, just basic block shapes out. Um, but it works. Okay. So I'll turn it up a little touch, but yeah. Uh, really, once we start getting painting, I might turn it up a little bit. That way it fills in that dead noise. But let's see, a few other ones. I think we kind of got the main idea of what we want to do. But this is basically how I use reference. Um, I just kind of come in and, you know, of course all this art is copyright by the holders, but the way I see it, if these people got published, by Games Workshop doing Warhammer art. They probably did something right. So we're going to study what what makes this right, I guess. And yeah, so here's another one. Um, MD4 Chan. I don't know if that's uh, official art or if it's fan art. Either way, it's good. You know what I mean? It's, it's good regardless. So we are going to save it. Um... 40k, Warhammer, 40k hyphen, cool. So we got that one right there. Is that three? Did we save three? Let's take a look here. So we saved two. What was that other one that I saw? Is it this one? Yeah, I think so. Ooh, let's take a look at, let's take a look at him. Let's take a look at that one. Fine art print. A whole bunch of canvas prints and stuff, which is cool. Art Station actually opened up their own print shop. Some, uh, two of my things have prints now, which is awesome. Um, but Chris, how's your uh, Kickstarter going for for the uh, watercolor art stand? Which sounds really cool, like, to make the full stand to be able to, like, present and sell the art, that's, that's rad. So let's actually kick that back and go view image? Yeah. Save image, Warhammer, 40k, Iron Warriors. So today's program that we're going to use is not actually going to be Photoshop. I am going to use Affinity Photo, which is a one-time purchase fee of, I think, 40 or 50 bucks. It's kind of the biggest thing on the block now as, as, opposed, to, uh, as opposed to Photoshop. Like, or people use it instead of Photoshop. It has a lot of the same features. Um, what I am going to actually do though, I was thinking about using some of the traditional stuff from either Krita, which is free, or Clip Studio Paint, which I know I'll be working with you, Chris, on uh, whenever we do our session. That's primarily what we're going to use uh, for that one. You haven't done any of the rest. Oh, that's great, man. Congrats, dude. Because that's, that's a big deal. That's awesome. I, I can't even imagine trying to set up my own stand and like going out and selling the work like that's a that's a hustle i'm a sales guy but like that's a hustle it's a little different because you're kind of selling not a part of you that sounds pretentious but you know you, you're putting yourself out there for real like and that's a that's a big deal i think you're gonna do well man like your color stuff is like mwah, your colors are on point um yeah so that's kind of and just to give you a preface and kind of a shout out to everyone out there that's going to watch the archive of this uh, I will be doing a mentor session with Chris. We're probably going to record it. We probably won't live stream it. Um, we'll just do a, kind of a Skype call. And uh, I think the format that we're going to do it is I'm going to start by kind of going and, and looking at Chris's work, which is watercolor work. Follow him on Twitter. Awesome stuff. Uh, really good colors. Um, I'm actually going to probably sample whenever we do a piece together, essentially. I'm going to sample your color palette. <laughs> I'm just going to get a photo and be like, click. I want that color and I want that color. So, and basically I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, we're going to work together and I'm going to essentially make a digital watercolor painting. 
because that way you could maybe replicate some of the main ideas and stuff. Uh, but it also will help me because going and taking that leap to traditional watercolor is going to be, you know, it's frightening. <laughs> watercolor kind of does its own thing. Uh, but we're going to try to, we're going to try to mimic it the best that we can. Um, but yeah, and tonight what we're going to do, we're just going to set up a little bit of just basic shape structure, shape language, start lighting some stuff, start seeing what we got. Uh, probably just black and white, I would say. And the next time we do a stream, we could color it. I think that'd be cool. Um, but that way we'll get the real value structure. But I will show a few tips uh, for for everyone in the audience that wants to see some some really uh, neat like tricks that you can do. So let's open up Affinity Photo. So we'll open this one up and then we will bring in a few of these pieces that we just downloaded uh, by the other Warhammer artists, the amazing Warhammer artists. And I'm going to show you one trick that's super helped me and out a bit with the kids. Oh no, you're, you're fine. Um, do what you got to do. I just laid mine down about an hour ago, girl to girl. And we're going, we're going to the beach over the weekend. So that's going to be fun. Um, but yeah, we told her to get a ton of rest and all that. So we are going to, let me check something real quick. What are the, you image info. What's the a thousand by fifteen hundred? Okay. Is that right? Yeah, okay, I guess that is right. A thousand by fifteen hundred. That's that's a decent uh, size. So let's go to new document. We're gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be web. Um let's do there's full HD. We can do custom, right? Okay, yeah, so dimensions, page preset, okay. So we are going to do page width was 1,000 by 1,500 at 72 DPI. We're going to hit OK. Bring it in. Thinking about it. So Affinity Photo does run a little slower than Photoshop, but not... Uh... Come on. What you doing? What you doing? Um, but it's not... There we go. Come on, thinking about it, man. It, it's a little glitchier. Oh, why is it taking so long to bring up the new deal? Or is it coming up in a new window, maybe? No. Huh. There it is. Okay, there's our buddy. There he made it. So I'm going to bring in a few of these other pieces, and I, I'm going to show you the quickest tip in the world that will help new artists, I mean artists like myself wanting to go from like the beginner to intermediate or intermediate to advanced those stepping stones this is the best trick I've ever seen in regards to finding out your values so in my opinion and I could be wrong but in my opinion values are the single most important part of any piece of art it's all, it all comes down to your values. So what are values? Values in the most simple term is going from dark to light and the steps in between. Um, so basically a lot of people think, oh, what's in the light and what's in the shadow? Yeah, that's one way to look at it, but you almost have to get the idea of light and shadow out of your head before you think of value. A uh, perfect example. So we have these three pieces right here. And looking at it, you're like, oh, the bright fire, um, you know, probably the brightest part of this is going to be maybe right here. Maybe some of these because, you know, that hot feeling of the, uh, the colors and all that stuff. But if we make a new layer, so in uh, Affinity Photo, I'm going to add a pixel layer, which is basically a rasterized layer. I'm going to fill this, edit, fill with black and then I'm going to apply and I'm going to change this uh, layer mode over to color and it makes anything black and white so you know if, if you thought that you know this part was probably the lightest of the picture you were right 
right? Because this is the closest to white. On that scale, it's the closest to white. But you'll notice the stuff that was like the yellow, orangey kind of in the deal, it's sort of your lighter mid-tone. Your mid-tone, of course, being 50% gray. And then a lighter mid-tone would be closer to white than that. And then a darker mid-tone would be closer to black. But well, what's the old saying? Your darkest light... Your darkest light cannot be darker than your... Yeah, lightest dark or something like... You basically have to keep your your values in check. So, or yeah, your darkest light cannot be darker than your lightest dark. So, yeah, we'll see whenever we start painting. Um, I usually like to start with mid-tones and kind of build up and down and kind of see what shapes it makes. But you'll see, as it's a foreground, as it gets closer to the foreground, it becomes darker. You become sharper, things are in focus, your eyes can see it better. And as it gets further back, like this inferred detail, that's basically atmospheric perspective. The atmosphere is in the way. And you'll notice if the, the sky is like a yellowish gray, as things get further away from the viewer, from our camera, it gets more into the color of the sky. So it gets closer and closer and it steps closer and closer to that value. And it gets hazier, it gets fuzzier, it's out of focus. It really brings that sense of like depth in there. But you'll notice like a lot of this stuff, let me find the, uh, and I am still getting used to Affinity Photo, so it may take me a moment, but you'll notice, you know, very sharp colors right here, a lot of light. But then if you look at maybe even here on the sides, like this type of stuff, that's really, it's really vague. It's not very detailed. See? And like, just one, two, three brush strokes. I mean, something pretty quick. And then here, it's just random shapes. Um, you can make it kind of be whatever you wanted. And you'll also see that kind of the true master class of it is your lightest value and your darkest value are right next to each other. And whatever is the lightest and the darkest should be together, like right next to each other, because that draws the viewer's eye. Because I know if I were to set this back into black and white, the first place I want to look is like right here. Like right here. Because that's your lightest and then this is your darkest, or tied with your darkest, I guess. But it, that draws your eye. And you'll notice that the stuff around here is pretty sharp, right? Like some of the stuff, maybe if it's in the flame, he might haze it up a little bit. But you'll notice, okay, you can see the engraving. You can see this type of stuff. But then the further away you get from that line, it starts kind of blurring out a little bit. Uh, not much. They did a really good job of keeping the character in focus primarily. Uh, but yeah, even the floor, you know, it's a little sharper here, a little more detail, more lighter value, good contrast, and then it gets smoother the further it goes out, away from your main focal point. So that's what we're going to try to emulate, because I want to say um, this is going to be the same thing. So if I go in, if I go, what do I want to do? Oh yeah, fill. Edit, fill, black. And then change that to a color overlay mode. There we go. Color. The same exact thing. So, as different as those pieces are, they have a lot in common. You see? So, the further they get out, like I'll turn this back off, the further this gets back out, the closer to that brown of the sky it gets. It builds in that depth. Also, the more solid the shapes without a lot of detail. But once again, you talk about the lightest light is next to one of the darker darks. That's your contrast. So, where are we at? Boom. Yeah. Right here. So, I love this kind of... It's almost like a cheat, in a way, is doing this grayscale thing. Because now you can really see what you're looking at. Instead of your mind saying, oh, this is the helmet, this is the shoulder pad, this is the weapon, this is the... You're now just seeing it kind of as a shape in context with other shapes. And that's really the secret. Because, I mean, look at this. There's not even detail on this guy. There's not. There's like a slight little thing right there. Maybe right there, right there. And then the rest of it's a, literally a silhouette. This is a silhouette. But it shows how good, good design and good shapes can be. Because you're also seeing him having the same similar stuff. Your mind fills in the blanks. 
for this. So pretty cool. Um, and then where's that third one? Yes. So same thing. Maybe not as intense here. This Pietor does like snow, which is very hard to do because snow reflects everything. Um, so let's actually look at the values on this because I'm interested in it. Let's look at, we're going to come up here, fill. We're going to go black, boom. Um, apply, and then we're going to color overlay. Even still, though, I mean, look, he doesn't do the full, big, sweeping value range as far as, like, going all the way down the gamut. But he goes from pretty extreme white to almost pitch black. I mean, that that might actually be pitch black. Let me see. Very little bits, like right in here. Um, but then, you know, darker values, darker grays, things like that. But see, once again, you'll notice that it draws the attention because look at like this light under here, this kind of curve, the con, is that concave, convex? Which one comes out? Convex, right? This convex armor, almost bright white and pretty much right near pitch black. Uh, so once again, you want to come and you want to look right here. You want to look right here at these faces. You want to look, you know, and then as you can see, here's your focal point right here as you get further away from the focal point you can see his lines just start getting crazier right um it's a great way to mimic the eyes use of being able to like focus on something and then as as something's in your periphery it blends out it just kind of goes away so that's kind of what we're going to mimic so what we see is really big shapes right um big contrast so light on dark all that stuff and then it looks like the uh the characters take up either half or the third yeah, it's about half yeah about 50 percent. so this would probably be good for card art right so that's kind of what we're gonna do um what I am going to do, and let me bring this up. I'm going to bring up Pure Reference, or Pure Ref. This is something I highly recommend. Um, I actually use this in my tutorial on Gumroad. Uh, so Pure Ref is a program where you can just drag and drop images um, as a reference board. So I just drag it from my desktop, double click, to, and you can zoom in and out. You can drag stuff like right next to things. And you'll see that this art board or the canvas board just gets bigger and bigger depending on what I add to it. So if we have, and see, that's the original size of that one. So what we could probably do, do this right there. That way it's kind of all right here. If you want to center up something in your canvas, you can double click it. Um, so let's say we wanted to go to this one on the upper right, double click it. Now it centers it into frame. You can zoom in out, um, double click. So it kind of bolts you back in. The other really cool thing I like about Pure Ref, you can lock it to be the thing always on top. So no matter what you have coming up, whether it's this or, oh, it's a website or it's always the top window. So it works great for like pinning it somewhere. And then, well, oh yeah. And then the other part, because I'm a big fan of value, if you right click and you go to, I believe it is, canvas yes you can lock the canvas where it is you can reset the camera zoom all that stuff but you can also click grayscale and guess what turns it to black and white you get your values um very very cool so i like that this is probably what we're going to use a bit just to be able to compare okay it looks like the darkest values are kind of in the middle of their chest looks like the light catches those big like big deals on them Oh my God, Todd, my man. So Todd, you came in at the perfect time, brother, because we're about to start the actual painting. But just know, I've been I've been eyeballing that Nashville by Night team, and I was thinking of doing some dope fan art of that stuff. Shucky ducky, quack quack. See so yeah, how we're getting a little loosey goosey some big ass beer right here um but we're gonna dig in and we're gonna start making some dope stuff i can't 
I, I cannot promise that this will be any good. We're just going to go in there and start doing some shit. Um, so here's this right here. Which one do we want to kind of... I like this sort of grungy, big-ass shoulder pad stuff coming off the back type thing. Um, so we might use that one as kind of our influence, I guess you could say. Uh, we're going to make our own armor. We're going to do all that. But I, I just want to do a quick blocking sketch first. Get big values in there. Um, so what I'm going to do, let me actually um, bring this over here. Bring this side by side. So now we kind of have a reference. Let's, um, so, bye. Um, would you like to save? No. We'll do this one. Would you like to save? No. Would you like to save? No. Okay, perfect. So here we go. So we are an uh, affinity photo. And that's basically, we're gonna be doing some sketching on one layer right here. So, is that the other one? Oh yeah, it is. Ha, ah, okay. We don't need two. Okay, we just need the one. Now I am using my Huion uh, 60, or let's see, 650 HD, something like that. We are going to just start this one in good old black and white. Let's start our rasterized layer. Let's call this one background. And then we're going to do another one on top of that called shape sketch. So this is kind of how I start everything nowadays. Um, let me come in here. Let's actually use my brush pack. Haha, <laughs> cheap plug. Um, we'll use my brush pack and start setting in some values, just some basic, uh, just basic gross looking <laughs> art stuff, uh, but it's pretty good. So the cool thing about Affinity uh, Photo is you can see the actual outline of the brush before you start doing the stuff with it, which is pretty good. Um, and then like cloud brushes, you know what I mean? So you can get in there. Uh, let's do, how do we want to color this one? Let's do this one. Okay. So this will just be kind of in black and white. And what we'll do, here's our color wheel. Let's do kind of a medium gray. Yeah. And then this back one right here is going to be not quite white. I want to save pure white for like very few highlights. It's a very technical term. Gross art stuff. So, here we go. I like to just get kind of the chalky sort of brushes and get them in here. Um, actually, it'd be helpful if I was on the right. Leia. There we go. Background. Boom. Cool. So we got some of this going. We're going to keep making it kind of bigger and bigger. Just get different type of textures. And you'll see the brush engine's a little bit slower than Photoshop is. Um, and actually, what we'll do, instead of using my brushes for right now, let's use... Um, let's use Affinity Photos brushes real quick, just to see. Well, that one, those are kind of slow too. Um, Yeah, I think it, I wonder if it's just the size that we got going on right here. We're going to muscle through it. We will muscle through it. So you notice I kind of like the sketchy, dry brush, uh, that sort of look to it. Uh, harness opacity. So yeah, I really, I'm a big fan of the anything texture. Um, pretty good actually try dry media there we go okay that's coming up a little bit thicker so that's good so we'll sort of just get some shapes in here it's ugly but that's fine because it's all about kind of muscling through and getting to the good stuff come on bro come on bro that let's make that a little bigger and by the way, my shortcut key for uh, making... I actually think I have all the defaults 
on my art programs. So to make the brushes bigger, I use the bracket keys. So start bracket is to make a brush smaller, and then uh, end bracket is to make the brush bigger. And I think it goes up by, depending on the brush, it goes up anywhere from five pixels to 10 pixels every time you hit that button. So we have this, let's bring this down a little bit. to be on the separate yep haha <laughs> gotcha okay so we'll just rename this in a minute so let's actually bring this back up here <laughs> while doing a spreadsheet yeah so we will kind of block in just some hazy nonsense right here and these are very technical terms, by the way. Stuff like hazy nonsense. And <laughs> it, I think it's really just based on shape design. Brush engine is working really weird. I hate to do I might just want to switch over to Photoshop just so I can do this quickly. Just because, just even getting this blocking in. Blocking in in the Photoshop part would be about 12 seconds. Um, and I think these brushes are just having a tougher time. So yeah, let's do that. So let's actually exit out of here. I promise you Affinity Photo is good. It's just for what we need. Um, we just need to get to it. Get to it, to it. Yo, Marco, my man. Pop some one sheet so I can break it down better. Oh, yeah. That's good. And plus, that way you get a good, uh, like a directory just wherever you gotta be so yeah we got we got our stuff right up here um i mean that's cool i like this idea i like this idea of like he's standing on rubble or another duder i like this style the most i think pietor does amazing just they're very much digital brushes but the way he makes the energy of them it's kick ass so what were our dimensions? We want to create new, and ours was going to be, oh man, what was it? It was 1,000 width by 1,500 height, I believe. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, look how fast that comes up. Oh my god. Oh my god. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to, so backgrounds right here. We're going to unlock that layer. Then we're gonna do shape sketch. We're gonna do background layer, background layer. Cool. So now we will use my brush pack. So the one you can buy for a dollar, one dollar on my online shop, um, you get legit. Let's see, where's my? There it is. You get all kinds of goodies. You get like foliage, you get cloud brushes, texture brushes, the oil brushes that I use, smoke brushes, a palette knife. Uh, you get something that um, like Feng Zhu, who I'm a big fan of. I have a Feng Zhu brush in there and I also have a Sparth brush. So if you like Sparth and the halo sort of look, which I definitely do, uh, there's flat tip brushes, oil pastels, uh, a blender brush and some really cool gimmicks that you can use to make it look like a traditional painting. All that's in here. Um, also, I put in stuff like, where are they at, where are they at? Oh yeah, vanishing point brush. So let's say we wanted to make the vanishing point for this piece of art. Um, then I can come in here, remove all this stuff. That's the only annoying thing about having this always on top is it blocks everything. So if I do this, I can just make a vanishing point right there on my canvas, and then I can just use that. You know what I mean? I can make it on its own layer, I can overlay it, multiply it, whatever I want to do. Um, but yeah, that's included in that brush pack. So I am biased once again, but I do highly recommend it. Let's block in 
Let's do oil and water. Let's do not all the way black, but we'll do it about. If it's a 10 step scale where you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, ten, let's do it about a seven. We'll do seven, and then the background, we'll do it about a four. Or the, the background color, I should say. So now, check this out. Whenever I get to come in here for the background layer, it's going to mix depending on how much pressure I put on. And I customize this one. How much pressure I put on, it's going to either emulate that back color or that front color. And see, it kind of works a lot like that traditional media does. So then I can come in here and make it lighter if I want to, just a slight tap, or I can go heavier. And then it starts blending stuff in for me too. Um, but as you can see, Photoshop is just a little bit more refined on the brush engine. Um, just works a little bit better, in my opinion, but of course I've used it for so long. Um, so then if I want to come in and I want to like just block in some other stuff smoothly, I can get that. So, just kind of sketchy stuff. I do think... Um, this is going to be mainly the black and white sketch to start off with because we talked at the very beginning about value. Value is how light and dark something is. So a lot of people think of it like light and shadow, and that's good, but it's also, it's kind of deceptive. So perfect example is we have these things in black and white. All of these are actually in color. Um, see, and they're actually in color, but you can always color on top of it. So like you'll see it in color, but the thing is, color kind of tricks your eye sometimes. Because like, okay, perfect example. Here's a super basic crash course on, on value. So if I were to go, let me brush this. Let me go to swatches. Let me go to color. Where's my color window? Okay, perfect. So I'm going to move the color window here. I'm going to make this my uh, hue cube right here. Okay. Did you know that pure red, and I'll actually do this on a new layer, so we'll check this out. So on shape sketch, I will get pure red, I will get my, my Sparth style brush. So we have pure red. You think of how bright and saturated, and oh my God, that's gonna be. Like really bright, right? That's really bright, it's super harsh against that gray. Now let's go to like the mid-tone, and it may be kind of hard to see. Um, so yeah, we got like the mid-tone right here, something like this. So in theory, these look pretty far apart. Like if you're just looking at it, you're like, oh my god, that red's so much brighter. But then if I were to go in and actually just do a, a color overlay, edit, fill, uh, we'll do black, and then we'll do a color overlay. The red's darker. Do you see? Your eyes play tricks on you all the time. And this is what I'm like practicing on right now. Is to like, I need to really see. Because we'll, we'll turn it, we'll turn this back off. Look at that. You think that red is just bam. You know, you think it's super bright and like extensive and all that stuff. Let me move that over. So you think that there's no way but then whenever you do that, you realize how much darker that red is. You know what I'm saying? Like, crazy. So that's the stuff I'm learning right now. Um, and that's why this type of stuff so much fun. Is because you can see this, but your eye will play tricks on you. It's like we talked about earlier. If we look at this one, you're going to think, oh, because of the fire and what we know what fire is. All these orange parts are probably some of the lightest parts on the canvas. Not really, because if we kick back and we go to, uh, and we'll, I'll actually make this bigger so you can really kind of see it. So if we actually come in and grayscale this, this color up here, like if we just pay attention to this one, and the ones in the background kind of match, you know? But then if you look at it without... They look completely different. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's mind blowing to me. It's like staggeringly weird. So 
So that's what makes art fun. Hooray. <laughs> I mean, I do love it. I love learning about it and like getting better at it and being able to see it better. But like, good Lord, you know what I mean? Like there's so much to it and it's, it's just kind of crazy. Um, so we are actually gonna, yeah, the technical artiste. So we're gonna get rid of this stuff right here. So as we can see, there's gonna be a strong silhouette. So let's actually make us a strong silhouette on the shape sketch. Um, we'll come back to the background, of course. We'll make it into a thing, whatever we want. But I like the big power armor. It looks like, let me come over here. Let me put in kind of a darker mid-tone. So we have the Sparth brush. So we are gonna do some, so what? He has his like head right here. Yeah, kind of heads in the middle, but then everything else is like, <laughs> good Lord, you know? Um, so if they have this and he has that sort of thing going on. So what is this shape? Is it like, is the whole thing like a mushroom? And then it like comes up. You know what I mean? Like, look at these shapes. It's crazy. And then like, really phallic now, but that's weird. Um, but you see what I mean? Like it, it does a weird, that and then it comes down kind of has that sketch look to it and of course his arm we're not going to just replicate this pose by the way i'm just kind of trying to get a sense of like what are these freaking proportions man like if this dude's head's right here that means his body is let's see one two three four five six seven so that's his actual body height you know what i mean like you're about seven heads high as a human being. What the hell is all this? Like, these legs have to be... <laughs> freaking enormous. You know what I mean? Like, look at that. That's crazy. And then, like, big-ass shoes. So he's just a big, hulking, like... I got gotcha. you. So let's get that silhouette in there. Um, let's make this bigger. And then we can kind of pose the silhouette. <laughs> that tree trunk leg, man. So if we have this. Yeah. So even this, it's funny. Now that we silhouetted this in. This kind of reminds me of uh, what's his name on uh, Gears of War, not not the, uh, not Marcus Phoenix, but uh, who's the main bad guy? Ram, Rom, what was his name? You can kind of see it. Like now, I gotta Google it because now I'm really <laughs> Gears of War. Yeah, Rom, one villain. Yeah, look at that. So like you can start seeing. You got that shape right there, right? You start to see the big, you know, so you just start noticing things. It's like how people can see images and clouds. Oh, I didn't want nothing. To go. Sorry, buddy. Um Yeah. Actually, he might be a good reference as well. Just to kind of get a different sense of different armor types or uh yeah, because see, he has kind of that alien-esque deal coming up. Um, I will say, Gears has great sci-fi armor. Like, the big, bulky football linebacker shit. It's good. Um, but we want our dude to be an alien. We want our dude to be nasty. You know what I mean? Like, kind of this nasty-looking... Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, so... The coal train, baby. Let's do so if we were to block in stuff that's one arm this is another arm should he be holding like a gun like should a gun be over like this you know and that way this arm 
is right here holding it. This arm's maybe holding that, like that. Um, I actually like that placement. <laughs> I just did it like, uh, it could go there. So let's actually keep that. Let's keep that gun. Um, we'll bring this down a little bit. So that also begs the question, what is our light source? Where's our light? Because that's going to tell us how we're going to form these shapes. So I'm thinking, okay, so how are the lights done in here? One up, what's up, brother? So good to see you. Just want to say hi. Well, hello. Thank you for stopping in. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. I know you keep kicking ass on the retro games, man. That's good. Looks like a lot of this might be kind of backlit. We could do that. We could be moody. Do some backlit stuff with maybe a... With a top light kind of shining down. Because I think that's sort of what this is as well. It's not bad. And I actually like this idea of this little tiny helmet. I mean, they all have that in common. That little tiny helmet. In regards to the big area. And he has like gas mask stuff on. Um, let's do this type of thing. Because... My anatomy's not great. <laughs> I really need to practice anatomy. So, we're going to zoom in a little bit. We're not going to copy it word for word, but we're, we are going to kind of look to see. Okay, so, that's the hand. We've got an arm. It's going to be like, there's a shoulder pad, and probably what? There's a shoulder pad? Like, the bottom of it? Um, Change my name for start as an old cat. Fits a bit better? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, we have... This is more of the quick outline. <laughs> I, the only thing is, I don't want my guy to look like the bear in the big blue house. <laughs> Where he has the big old shoulders. And, hey guys, how's it going? Hope it's going well. Oh, I think I know how I can avoid that. If the shoulders actually come up and it looks like they do this. While the rest of this is like a backpack. So this back here would be the backpack part. Is that right? Oh, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, I'm wanting to get into it. My goal is to work on something like Warhammer, Magic the Gathering, um, like Eternal, any of the card games. Um, that's sort of what I want to go for. Uh, but yeah, want to get more into characters, backlighting. Um, thanks, man. Uh, yeah. I, I'm focused on that. I really like environments. Environments are kind of my go-to. But I need to start getting better with characters. If I want to make it in the business, I gotta be able to paint people and creatures and soldiers and all that stuff. Uh, with the same type of clarity that I can get with an environment. So this is fine. Um, so that looks like it kind of has this action going on. Kind of real football pad sort of stuff. Um, something like that, maybe. Um, okay. You know what? I'm just going to keep the head blocked in. We can come back to it in a little bit. But I, I like the fact that we're sort of drawing out what this is going to be. So I want him to have his big-ass gloves. Right? So if he has his big-ass gloves, the arm, arm. His wife? Yeah, it's uh, two years. Yes, sir. It's going well. I actually like it. She, she probably can't stand me. <laughs> Bless her heart. But yeah, I, I dig it. I like it quite a bit. I think it's better than trying to play the field and all that stuff. Like, I'm an old man now. I got time for that. Um, see, I don't want to just straight up copy that armor, though. 
I, I, I'm really weird on reference. Uh, I like to kind of get general ideas and shapes and maybe proportions and stuff like that from a reference. But then the rest of it, I kind of want to make up on our own. Um... this this looks like a uh this kind of reminds me of the doctor or the medic in uh team fortress 2 but if he was just crazy let's stay off it <laughs> and my lawn you best get off that lawn oh i think i know why i'm thinking of the medic is because this if i were to bring a straight line down this looks like a big ass giant coat <laughs> looks like a big trench coat so what i probably need to do and this is why shape silhouettes are so good, is what you can probably come in and do is uh, you can probably like get rid. Yeah, okay, see, now this is more of like a monster shape type thing. Um, so if I come in here, I can bring that back in but get this. Now I'll do the Rob Liefeld where I don't have to draw feet. Oh, didn't do that. I meant to do that. There we go. I'm gonna erase this. Now he almost looks like a uh, like a pyromancer because he has all that. That would actually be kind of dope. We could make this guy a pyromancer. <laughs> Every pouch in the world. <laughs> Let's do every pouch. So like, here's a pouch. Um, we're gonna do that one. We're gonna do, uh, <laughs> we're gonna do this pouch over here. Beautiful. Let's do, uh, <laughs> um, what are some good gimmicks that we could do? So if we're starting to get kind of the base structure of our guy here, we can do a few things as we have this sketch that we could actually we could probably make this dude a make this dude a pyro just pouches I'm like uh what's his face the dude from <laughs> the dude from uh oh Tetsuo and Nomura with belts Say hi to Brit. Yes, sir. Have a great night, Cat. It's good to see you, brother. Ooh, what we could do. I got a cool idea from this. Just by looking at it. We could actually make this a pyromancer. We, we could do some of that. You know? Come here. Um, how is this lit? Because we could make that background like fire, like yellow, orange, um, sort of stuff. But we, we definitely still have to block in the shapes. And I guess the light will be coming from, like, actually, let me control Z that for me. So the light will be coming from, like, Kind of like up here but like towards us on the z axis so like towards us studio lighting almost up and like to the so like basically how i have my studio lights right now where i have a light like up here and then it's coming down so my lighting structure is kind of what we could work with um so like that would be all that right there so yeah, we can do that. Um, so that means we're gonna come in here. There's, he looks like the Doom Marine at that point. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna hit some of that. So if it's gonna come from this side, and I'm gonna keep that arrow right there for right now, that means a lot of this is gonna have a lot of key light. So we're gonna do some key lights here. Well, and actually, this is gonna be a shadow. So let me bring that back in as a shadow. And then bring this back up. I 
a gun built with pouches. Um, so then we have this backpack, which is catching some of that light. But see, that's the fun thing about doing this type of art is this is going to be a cast shadow, meaning that the light will only catch like right here, maybe. Because his helmet is going to cast a shadow this way. Yeah. Um, you know, before we get too much further, let me, uh, let me file. Let me save as. Um, let me call this... Desktop. Let me call this Twitch Sketch Character 1. Very creative naming very creative name so that light won't actually be as harsh um, neither will this light back here or this because the further it is away from the light source the less light it's gonna get yeah. so this is gonna be kind of the biggest light hits like anything facing up and I guess to the characters right is going to get a lot of light so like this will get a lot of light that'll get a lot of light I'll get actual straight white here in a minute and just do some stuff but this stuff will cast a shadow like the gun the gloves this stuff will cast a shadow down here and it'll be a little darker um, if we have that it's starting to feel like some forms you know have this because that's the thing is really with value is where you set the mood and like where the lights coming from and, and then of course like this would be here um, and then that would be in the shadow but Make him almost like a knight, you know? Yeah, and that would actually get quite a bit of light too. It wouldn't quite be as much as some of the other parts like right around here. Cause like for instance, what I could do is I could actually come in here, get almost pure white. Come on. Here, I'm gonna use my mouse because that's Almost pure white, but not quite pure white. Well, pure white. We're gonna hit that. We're gonna go there. This up top's gonna get it. This type of thing's gonna get it. Um, maybe this up here will kind of just separate the 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 pack from the. This, since it's facing up then not this because it's that stuff's facing down these um, we could probably do some rim light that'd be fine and do some of that get the rim light um, actually let's come back over here let's extend this leg out Those pants aren't the best, <laughs> but that's okay, because we're going to keep it pretty sketchy, right? Um, and what we can actually even do is, like, do that sort of thing, because we had... Boom. Bring this back to kind of the mid-spot. And I do like the sort of... Oh, so it starts off bigger up here. And then it sort of gets like smaller as you go down. And then this turns into just cloth stuff. Okay. Gotcha. 
just kind of build that in. Um, let's see. We actually probably need to get a little bit darker. And then what we can do here in a minute is we can start uh, photo bashing. Just to start getting some texture. So photo bashing kind of gets poo-pooed a little bit. Just because people are like, oh, well, you're not, uh, you're not actually painting every piece of chain mail. You're not, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, you're not a real artist because you're not, uh, you're not making everything from scratch. But the way I see it is using reference and using things like photo textures and photo bashing. You don't get mad at a chef for using a recipe. Like, they don't have to grow their own freaking organic whatever to be a chef. It's like a different skill set. You know what I mean? Like to take a good photo and to take, make a great painting are not the same at all. Um, so you're actually using other people's forte. And especially if you get their permission. If you're like, hey, I'm, I'm wanting to do this, this piece. Uh, I'm wanting to do what have you. Uh, is it okay? And you get the okay from them. Great. But there's also like good photo stock reference things uh, that you can just get straight up. Like there's Noah Bradley has a great 20 gig pack of just a bunch of landscapes. And he's like, hey, use them for whatever you want. And that stuff is kick ass, dude. Like real kick ass. Have I had any for exposure stories? Not yet. Thankfully, not yet. Um... I know they exist, and I did do, and to be fair, I will come clean, I did do a project for no pay, but it's because I believed in the project, and no one else on that project, even the director, is getting paid either. They're just doing this as kind of a passion project to put it on a resume. And I was like, okay, fair. Like, I'll do the same thing. Um, they do really good cinematography. They do all that stuff. I can't wait to show you guys what I've worked on, and like, I will tell you, they sent me 3D mock-ups of the concepts I made, and I almost started to cry. Like, it, because you have these other super talented 3D artists, the director, cinematographers, all this stuff, and they made your shit. Like, you drew and painted them a picture, and you're like, isn't that cool? And they're like, oh, we love it. And you think, oh, they're being nice, that's nice. And then they built it, and they took pictures of it, and they were, like, standing with it. And I was like, that's the thing. Like, that's the thing I painted, and it's real. Like, you guys made it. Um, crazy. Like, that's a crazy story. So it was worth doing that for free just to get that story. But now, whenever we work in the future, um, you know, that's when we'll be able to charge a little bit. You know, we have the... It's about networking. And, you know, I, I think that one, it's not necessarily for exposure. It's all of us. We're trying to figure out what the hell to do. You know what I mean? So that's different. That, that one's a little different. Um, I decided, yeah, I could make that gamble. Um, I could do that. And not feel bad about it. You know, not really feel um, all that put out with it. For exposure. Oh, some of them are bad, dude. Some of them are like, oh, how dare you? You're going to regret ever crossing me. And you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, yeah, some of those for exposure stuff is like crazy. That's a little dark on the value, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start blocking in the dark darks. Um, ambient occlusion, as it were. Parts that don't get hit with direct light. Um, that's right here. And I wonder, actually, I wonder if I could do like a... If this would be cool to do like a gas mask thing, like that sort of deal. I don't know. Now he looks like a really sad. Who's that? The wooden fighter from Tekken. <laughs> That's who he looks like. Because <laughs> this part kind of looks like a nose. Um, actually, let me go ahead and block that in, kind of like the Bane mask. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Some of that right there. Let me actually 
default, pick that color, and get that hit. And see, this is just kind of a quick value blocking. Like, I'm not really taking this part quite seriously yet. I mean, I will be, but I just kind of want to see how things look. Does this make sense? Yeah, Makojin, yes. So this one for sure won't get a lot of light because you got everything blocking that shit. And then another thing, if the light's coming from this way, that shadow is gonna be like... You see what I mean? Whenever you start putting cast shadows on stuff, everything looks kick-ass. Like, Everything starts looking like what it's supposed to. Um, shit just looks awesome. God, see, that's rad. Even just that little bit of light right there. Woo, that's the stuff that's exciting. Like, look at that shit. This is did by accident. It doesn't even matter. So, let's do that. I know I'm going to lower these values a little bit. I don't want that to be all the way. You know, I don't want that to be all the way um, white. Because I think that that's just overkill. You don't need that. And I want to kind of get rid of lines. I'm trying my best not to use lines at all. Um, you know, I actually don't know if I like where that mask is going so far. So that's another thing. You can't be afraid to just like paint over shit. Just like if it ain't working, it ain't working. Um, I can give him the, I'll give him a Sub-Zero mask. Look at this. Oh yeah, buddy. Now it's like the Doom guy. Um, so that one's away. So that would be right. And then this would be right. Yeah, maybe. Something like that. See, that doesn't make much sense. Now it looks like he's wearing a toupee of some sort. But you know, live your best life, bro. But yeah, it looks like he has the John Cena, like, high and tight. What would be rad for. Because, like, this dude's stuff comes down. And then it comes down. But it does... But, like, there's nothing else here. So, like... That turns... That would turn into... Uh, like, if I were to just kind of ape this design. Which I might, and then modify it a little. Because great artists steal. <laughs> if I were to come in here... And like, cause that one, basically he has the little top end right here. Is that right? Yeah. And then that comes down, down. And then those are like triangles coming up top. And he has his full on mask. That way, meaning I can get this, bring this up bring these up something like that oh and I guess that gets darker that would make sense that gets darker right there and a few of those a few of those I'll come back and refine that of course but like this and then you got freaking like white eyes all right mine looks kind of like a turtle a little bit um, that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. See, but well, that's not right, because that would actually be in shadow, as this one would be a little bit, because this is sticking up over...
So for me so far with art, the, the really fun stuff is actually trying to make sense of lighting. Like I really like doing that because I think that's where things really start coming together. And that's also where you can get a whole lot of like good painterly strokes and stuff like that. Um, I think it's really fun. Because I just like stuff that looks like a painting. Let's get... Oh yeah, I know we were about to do photo bashing. So let's block in a little bit more. And then we will actually get to that. Um... That's good. Back right here. This. And like, I don't like doing straight white. Oh, that's not straight white. Great. Ha <laughs> Because straight white can definitely overpower stuff. Um, we'll actually do some of these. Make that a little darker. Something about that backpack doesn't seem right. Oh, probably this. Get rid of this one. Hard to add that out. Actually, you know what? Let me get rid of the backpack entirely. If we want it later, we can always put it in later. Does that look right? Does his head look a little, a little stuffed? A little stuffed into his armor? A little gumpy? I might make his head a little smaller. So I don't like using this type of tool uh, just because I still have that thing of like, oh, it's digital and you just resize it and it's cheating. But I need to get over that. If I want to work in the industry, I gotta get over that. So if I go to free transform, just make his head smaller where would his head lay on in context like here maybe yeah maybe let's let's start with that let's start with that let's uh come back over here that part in. So we have some of this. And then, yeah, that way we can sort of bring this out right here. Now he's like looking like a Fallout soldier. <laughs> um... It's funny how you'll start doing a thing and then you start seeing it as other things. But that that's, in my opinion, part of the, the charm and part of the fun of doing this type of art. Kind of enclave stuff. Yeah, that's cool. So I wonder if we should just kind of embrace that. Embrace that sort of enclave-esque vibe. Um... Get some of that lighting in there. There we go. Now I'm just working off memory. Okay, looks like 
Now it's like he has a Mega Man helmet. <laughs> Mega Man. Oh, you know it would be sick? So we can take some of that reference of like how these are really sharp things. What would it look like if I put horns on this guy? Would that even make sense? Does it matter? That looks like an Ultimo Dragon, dude. Look at that. Now he looks like a Gundam. I just like the fact that we have no idea what we're painting, so we're just going to keep adding shit to it. <laughs> He's like a Gundam that wears boxing gloves. So if we have that... Uh... You know what? Let's embrace that. Let's embrace that whole gimmick. Where he's like a weird orc with the Warcraft shoulder pads that don't make any fucking sense. Something like this. Well, they kind of have to be seated, I guess, more in the armor for it to make actual logistical sense. Like, how the hell does he wear these type of thing? Boom. Boom. We got that. We got that. We got that. Now it's like Legion of Doom shit. Super Shredder. Son? That's awesome. It's stupid, but it's awesome. <laughs> like, what? What are we even... Um, okay, and then the shape for this one. He has to come over here. I, I guess the big part that's facing the light is like this. Right? And then it has to come over a little bit. Um, Games Micah, what's up, my friend? Hello, hello. Hope you are doing well, man. It's good to see you. I'm making some dumb shit. And then this, of course, we're not going to have really any light here. And then as it gets closer and you can actually like see it, it's going to get more, uh, there we go, like that type of thing. Like it has to get that light from that top. Um, in fact, that's where this light needs to be. It needs to be from there. And then this one can come over here and that's right there. I don't really think that's right, necessarily. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not right, like value-wise, but that's fine. I feel like this needs another thing. Is it like, like the Shinobi style shit right there? Now we'll fully embrace the Ultima Dragon. That's a ton. So with the lit, the top down, it's gonna have a cast shadow. Now, That's actually a little too. Actually, that looks a little gumpy. I may go ahead and just get rid of that one. Might be a little too much, you know? Um, we do this. 
and I'm I'm actually getting too far into the details. Um, I still need to finish the actual composite, I would say. So if I were to come in here, this is kind of blocked over. This comes back into the light because of how the light is shaped. Also, that's where the light is right here. Uh, this could be where the fingers are. I know that doesn't make much sense, but we'll roll. Then that's right here. That's not facing this stuff at all. Neither. Simplify. Just kind of simplify this up a little bit. And then I can add a little bit of light, maybe right here. So I'm trying to make Duder not look super flat, but I feel like I'm losing it a little bit. So if I were to come over here, do some more. That feels okay. on the uh, probably need to work on the full on render a little more and this one just yeah I will kind of look at the reference on that one because these are the light over there like so oh yeah and those values kind of match so that might actually work okay for what we're trying to do and then from here yeah we'll do another thing where that's blocked out boom there so it's starting to I don't know it's starting to do something Definitely dark. Okay. So we're going to sketch that out a little bit. Got that. And then the other leg, yeah, I think is going to fit just fine right here. Just kind of put in some random detail here. That ain't right. That's right. Okay. That one this. Let's get it more dark. Yes. Always more dark. Grim dark. If that's casting down, we want that down here. This is hardly going to get any light whatsoever. This one might get a little more, but it'll be more of a grim light. Um... I don't like this hand. I don't know if I like this pose too much, but 
we're gonna work with it. We're gonna try to like muscle through it. Um, that. So that actually looks kind of cool. And what I can do here, kind of infer more detail to where it's not. Uh, I don't have to paint like every texture, pixel, or whatever. It, it's just more. I want differences in materials. The materials are kind of a pain in the ass. They just are. Hopefully, I can make a few of these things look a little more metallic. I make this smaller. Do you know why I'm actually like the most proud of this part right here? This is his uh, right shoulder pad. I really like that one. Actually, while we're thinking about it, let me go in and save. And then let's actually make his gun look a little more dope. What do you say? So, it could be... Like a... What do we want this to be here? We want it to be... Some, like, big ass... Because, like, if his hand... This is where the trigger is. Or no, actually, the trigger would be further back. Because if he has good trigger control, he's not going to have his finger on the trigger. Um, he's going to have it uh, kind of up above the trigger. So if the trigger is like right here, where does the ammunition go in? So right now, the body stock kind of looks like an AK. But that don't make no sense. Because this is the future. What do I want to do with the gun? I want it to... So I want it to have the top stock up here. Because it's sci-fi, so guns can kind of do whatever the hell we want them to do. They can have, like, plasma energy or whatever. But I also want it to kind of make sense. Like, that if you looked at this gun in real life, it could fire. So if you have a firing pin, you have... Well, that for sure, because this is where the light's not hitting. That's where the light's not hitting. Um, then... sort of thing. I don't know, man. Um, but then this finger will actually be getting some light while the other ones are not because they're kind of folded under. So you kind of get the knuckle, get a little bit, but then this... How would his glove fit? He's holding his hand like this, and the glove pops out. So if this is his hand. This is his other hand. It was kind of like a tiny gun for... Or dude or his side. 
That might be what's throwing me off. He has a small ass gun. You know what that means. Gotta make that gun bigger. That looks like a giant fucking pistol <laughs> that he has to hold. D -d this boy needs it. He needs the big gun. He he's a real thick boy. Ooh, you know what? That's a good fucking idea. Make this look like that double shotty from Doom. Kind of. You know? Like, make that look cool for whatever fucking reason. And then come over here. Get that sidewind type look. Uh... Ooh, that would be good. Hold on. And then here's what we'll do. We'll do that. We'll get that right there. Would it be right here, though? Would it be... Yeah, probably so. I mean, that doesn't even make sense, but it still looks kick ass, and that's what really counts in life. It's not about what the gun can do, it's about just how cool does it look. That. That's going to form that shadow a little better. Now I'm kind of just hopping around. Which means it now probably is time for photo bashing. If I can't quite decide where I'm at now, I bet it is time to kind of buckle in. Start doing the shit, you know. By the way, I love this brush. I'm biased. That's why I put it in my brush pack. So if you want this cool sparth brush that I've been doing this, uh sketch with it's in my pack you can get it for a dollar one dollar okay so now we need to figure out what is our dude made of like literally what sort of is pouch we got to render that pouch it's a very important pouch um we got to figure out what our our thick boy is, is going to be rocking with. So I bet this kind of samurai ultimate, ultimo warrior, ultimo dragon type thing. Yeah, it's kind of Gundamish too. It's like a little samurai ish, a little Gundamish. Uh, so first off, we're going to save. But now we're going to go to one of my favorite resources. We are going to go to Pixabay. Actually, let me get rid of this one. Mode. Always on top. Don't need that. Let's go to Pixabay. And let's go... Let's just look at armor. Oh. Armor. Yeah. A little too shiny for what we want, but... And see, these are just all stock photos, but a lot of times it's other artists' renditions of things. So here we go, Samurai Warrior. Okay. Actually, let me type in Samurai. Let's see what we got as far as the stock photos. Oh, what? Pixabay.com. Samurai. Oh, yeah, see, okay. That's where I was getting that samurai idea from. Or, like, that's why it came up in my mind as samurai. That, like, right here. Actually, that's kind of dope. Let's, uh... Let's see what we got here. Download. Save as samurai. You know, credit to all the copyright holders on these, for sure. 
Um, we are going to bash them, so you're not even going to really be able to tell. You'll be able to tell that we used photos, but you won't be able to tell kind of the reference that we used. Let's do... We did armor. We did samurai. Let's do soldier? Oh, it's going to be more like real-life military. This makes sense. Let's look at, let's look at Barbarian. Barbarian. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Great. We found it. That's who our guy is. Look, he has the helmet and everything. Oh, and he has a smartphone? Duders wearing. There you go. Here's some. Here's some Skyrim mask cosplay. Look at this. So not quite what we wanted. Um. Hmm. Because he's kind of Warhammerish. He's kind of Falloutish. He's kind of Samuraiish. Um. Doesn't even really make sense. Uh, let's do mech. Is that a type of plant? Is a mech a type of what? Well, maybe mecha. weird let's try um oh what's the other one pexels pexels.com let's do uh armor what are these gentlemen are up to okay some more like cloth stuff not bad but okay those are the other one um Dooter's looking pretty sharp. Looking pretty good. Um, let's do soldier again. If I can spell. Yeah, real life military stuff. Wait, here we go. What is this? I mean, it's pretty cool. He's a big ass weapon. So, thanks, Mike Navolta. We will probably borrow this one. Um, let's go save image as. Let's save it to the desktop. Pexels photo. Let's just play around with what we have right here and see what we can get as far as photo bash and see if it gives us any new idea. So, the best way, in my opinion, to photo bash is you come in, you, you look at the download. Um, we have some photos from some of the older uh, landscapes that I've done. Which one? Oh, sorry, it is late. Gotta get up in like six hours. Um. Oh, do cables, guns. That's smart. Yeah, let me do that right now, actually. So let me go here. Um. Images. Yeah, he has some crazy guns. Like, look at that shit. That's crazy, man. I didn't even think about cable. But that's a great point. Look at X-Force. Look at that. <laughs> oh my god. Look at that fucking gun. That's cool. 
just like plasma energy and so it, that's it's so interesting because it looks like they took a uh, a 1022 but and put it on uh, like a M4 with a grenade lock and a <laughs> it's but see basically they 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 didn't just photo bash they model bash they took they kit bash they took the kit from different guns and like put that shit together maybe another with big ass guns ooh rocket raccoon true look at that let's do a rocket a raccoon yeah, so he has more of the gauntlet, uh, or the Gatling gun. Oh, so it's more cylinder. I see. Yeah, so it's more cylinder deal. That's cool. Let's do rocket raccoon gun. There we go. Ooh, so that's pretty Halo-esque. Like, look at that. Look at that kind of just shape language. A lot of the curves, a lot of C curves. Got a few other C curves, maybe an S curve in there a little bit. What does my gun have? My gun don't have jack, I don't think. Um, Where is... There's the sample. And we might actually repurpose the helmet to kind of look a little more like this. Um, and then let's do desktop. Um... What was it? It was called Pixels, right? <laughs> yeah. Here's what we should do. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use some of the luchador action. Some of this photo bash. We're going to do this. Um, let's also do... Where are we at? There's a military guy. There it is. Okay. So, right here, here's what we'll do. And this will just give us a nice shape. This will give us a nice shape, so we're gonna uh, polygonal tool it. I'm not even gonna worry about the bullets necessarily or the rounds. I just want to come in here and get texture. That's all I care about here. I don't really even care about the shape all that much because I'm gonna shape it to fit whatever I need. Edit, copy. So this is basically how I approach photo bashing. Um, I'm going to make a brand new layer. Um, and actually just call this one photo. But I'm going to make a new group. And put all of the photos. Photos or bashing. In there. So let me drag that in here. Edit, paste. So yeah. Pretty big already. Um, so what we could do. You would think it'd be obvious. Just to be like, hey, you know what? Let's just free transform this. Let's spin it around. We'll fit it to our gun. We'll kind of see what it looks like a little bit. Uh, you know, hey, that looks, you know, it kind of fits okay. That's neat. And then, you know, you come in and let's say you change this to be soft light or hard light or something like that. So you get more of that. So actually, I do like how that looks. I do. Another thing you can do that's pretty dope. You go edit paste bring it in again and then here's where the fun happens if you're just gonna be like you know what I'm gonna do a pin light I'm gonna bring the opacity down and we're gonna use this on the character not just on the gun on the character uh, if we free transform it oh that's dope already look at that holy shit so you do that um, the best thing in the world, by the way, is called a mask. So if you're right here, you put a mask on something. If you paint it white, it's visible. If you paint it black, it turns invisible. Meaning, if I didn't want it just for the face, I'll color it out of the face. If I didn't want it right there, I'll just color it out right there. I'll just do this. That way I can... Of this make it a little bit more subtle in some places a little bit more hardcore in others and then let's say I erase too much just hit X to come back to white for my brush paint that shit back in son um yeah to call this a time saver is 
is is, is a very um, understatement of the century type thing. Let's see if we're going to hit that right there. Because we don't want to block in where we already got the gun doing it thing. You know? We already got the gun doing his thing. Um, but look at that. That right there just gave that dude so much more personality. So look at this. That That's before... That's after. There's already more texture. There's more life. And then I can just come in. I can paint it. I can use it. I can light it. I can maneuver it around. Whatever I kind of feel like doing. But this is the power of photos. Like, I don't know why more artists don't use it digitally. Probably because they feel like it's cheating. Which, you know, whatever. Um, I just think that looks way better. I think the ends justify the means. So in that same regard, let's go ahead and save because I'm actually really liking how this is turning out. Um, so that might be all we need to use that one for. Oh, hell yes. Let us hit it right here. So let's do... Let's see... Let me get some good cloth stuff right here on his right leg. And I'm going to use the man, the myth, the legend right here. Check this out. Get some There's the bay action on this piece. Edit, copy. Come back over here. Edit, paste. Booyaka. Um, look at that. It already kind of fits well. Oh, would be dope for this one. Oh, yes. Use it for the tarp. Or the whatever. Loincloth. I, I, I don't know what it is. Like his, his uh, regalia. What are those called? The like coat of arms that you wear? Is... So we'll do this. Let's actually bring this up a little bit. Retransform it. Bring that up. And that texture really knocks it out. Um, then we're going to hit, um, we're going to hit, uh, overlay, hard light's pretty good, screen's not bad, pen light's okay, linear light, Ooh, okay. Difference might be a good one. Divide's okay, but it adds a little bit too much vibrance for my taste. So let's actually do, uh, yeah, let's do difference. And then we're going to come in and we're going to warp this, okay? So we're going to, like, actually misshape it to fit the shape we kind of already had going. that right here have that cool so then we're gonna mask it we are gonna get rid of the stuff right above the belt and then maybe like right here and then make it look like it's attached as part of look at that dude look at that man there he is, Mr. Nerd in the Bay, making the appearance. <laughs> um, okay, Samurai. Samurai. Let's take... What do we want? We want... Damn, what do we want? Let's just see what this does. Get it and throw it on the canvas, see what happens. Oh, dude. Um, a 
all about that turn-based mobile. Hell yeah. So we got this. Um, we are going to kind of resize it. Transform. See, and like, you don't want the, the photo to like take over. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to flip it. Um, we're going to flip it. Makes it look kind of goofy. But what's really going to be cool is whenever we hit like let's see what do we want to do darken lighten and light what do we want to do about this pin light's pretty good but I don't really know. Let me try. I think it's the kind of the big, kind of the sphere that's doing a lot of the damage, I think. Why oh, say damage? Yeah, this might not even work. Which, that happens. I mean, you can try some shit, and if it just doesn't play, it doesn't play. Yeah, because I'm not seeing any shape, you know? I'm not seeing... Like, nothing's popping out at me. By doing this. Because normally you can see it, kind of like whenever we put Marco's fabric right there. It just worked. You're like, holy shit, that looks exactly like it needs to be there. But this, not as much. I wonder if I lower the opacity. No, but that, that, it actually doesn't. It actually doesn't do anything. Yeah, I don't actually think that's doing much of anything. Um. You know, it actually kind of, I guess it would. Does it maybe fit like over here? Maybe we're looking in the wrong spot. It's just not quite adding up. I just don't see it. Yeah, I don't see it. We're going to get rid of it. Um, now we're going to do something off the beaten path. Let's bring in... What do we want to bring? Let's bring in some texture from... I mean, I'm really tempted to use another Warhammer painting, but that's kind of... Like, you literally using someone else's art as a photo bash. Like, using my own art as a photo bash is fine. Using someone else's art... Eh, I, don't, I don't know what difference it makes doing photos versus paintings, but whatever. Um, those are my morals. Um, let's do... Let's bring in... A rocky landscape and see what we can get it sounds dumb probably will be dumb but let's see what we get let's see what we get so we have this right here let's go some of this rock texture copy Green dodge. Okay, there you go. See a little bit, just a little bit more grit, a little bit more life to it. You know what I mean? 
So we could screen that. And I think we're starting to get somewhere. Let's, what's pin light look like? Nah, not too great. Um, difference, not so much. No, too foggy, too hazy. Too, uh... Oh, that did nothing. Okay, I was like, wow, that's really subtle. It's so subtle, it didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, light looks pretty good. I'd have to go in and redo the values. But Lighten gave it a little bit of texture. Well, actually, I don't think it gave it any texture, to be fair. Well, no. I don't know if that's true. I think it did, especially, like, with this arm. I think it's really helped this. So, you know what? We'll keep it. We'll keep that. Um... Then what I'll come in for... So I guess what I could do, let me just mask it. See what we got here. out a little bit not much but just start defining some of these shapes that the texture is made and then I can come here I'm gonna darken these up a little bit and now we're starting to get somewhere Starting to get to a place. Not bad. It's a little grungy. Let's see, we'll come in here where it doesn't quite get the light and just do some of these. Just kind of touch it up a little bit. Not crazy, but just enough to give it a little bit of a something. Yeah, now we're now we're cooking with gas, dude. Cool. Okay. And that's gonna be darker. That's probably gonna be darker. Maybe, maybe. I think the mask is not working. <laughs> I keep looking at it and I was like, I think that's the worst part of this whole thing so far. Um this gotcha okay so we're gonna save um we'll do a few more photos and then we'll put in a really quick pass of color and we'll kind of see what we end up with so, we, yeah, we went from this to that for photo bath. Just gives it a little more sense of direction, a little more structure, and a little more something for the eye to look at. Um, yeah. It's looking okay. So... Let's see about well, this is probably where we could do some metal. But I kind of like the sort of plasticky look like that it has right here. I think my lighting is wrong on these and these.
Let's actually bring up our good pal. Uh, what do we got here? So this one works well because it does go darker. So I wonder if I can actually just tie all these pieces in together right now and do the paint. Yeah, let's do that. So if I do this, get that. What I can do is always on top of that. Now, here's the fun part. Now you take all of this stuff, you go select, all, edit, copy, merge. So it's going to make an exact copy of exactly what we see. Then, on top of all the photo layers and stuff, edit, paste. So now I don't destroy anything else. It's just here. And I can do uh, a paint over it. So let's do... Let's actually make a duplicate of this. Duplicate layer. And then we're going to do paint over one. Okay. So now we're going to start mimicking what we see here. The more scratchy, loose, like, details, but... They're still in there, and it gives something your eye to look at, and differences. So we are going to get ourselves a pretty swank brush. Jackie, Jack, how are you? Good to see you. Let me get... You know what we'll do? Oh, should I use the Feng Zhu brush? Because it's, it's a little more, uh, it's a little sketchier. Like, literally. I, I don't say that meaning, like, oh, it doesn't work as well. But, like, it, it literally looks like a sketch. See? Yeah. Probably, right? I could probably hit it with a pass like that. <laughs> it probably has been years, like, genuinely. Um, so we're gonna, yeah, that's giving us some good painterly strokes. Um, I kind of don't like these horns. We've had them for a while. Uh, should I... Guys, should I get rid of the horns? It's like, oh. Those and see what's cool about it is now as you start painting over this stuff it looks like I didn't even use photos like you really start building in those brush strokes and stuff and like you legit can't tell what's photo and what's not which is rad like that that's the goal I want people to look at my art and be like how the fuck did you paint that like, I just want them to be like, that's a pure painting. There's no tomfoolery. There's no shortcuts or tricks or... But there is. There definitely is. We have that. Come back over here. Get that. Cool. Something like that coming. Um, paint over that. I don't think we need that. Let's bring this more down. CC cleaner. Good lord. Yes, yes. I'll do a clean light. Let's see what I'll do is I'll actually come in and add a little bit of like texture. I know, I know it's not going to do much right now, but hopefully it's going to give us some teeth to kind of just grab onto whenever we want to come and refine some details or do something like that. Just going to give us a little bit of a wiggle room, playroom, whatever you want to call it. Um, ooh, wait a minute. I wonder if... That 
looks kind of weird as hell, but I sort of like it. It's like pincers or something. Marco, thanks, brother. And thank you for your sick photo reference <laughs> that we could use here. Um, very awesome. To be able to use my boy in the painting. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I give this dude, like, crazy faux hawk hair? I kind of dig that. I did it on accident, but I sort of like it. Um. <laughs> That's kind of hilarious. It's almost like a night elf now because the horns coming out of the deal, but those look like his ears a little bit. Huh. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. So if we have that, we're going to bring that back in. Sure. But yeah, we'll make sure the values are right. that there the belt reflect that See, what's funny is we still have the pouches and stuff. Like that whole, uh, kind of that night health mohawk. Yeah, man. That's, I'm thinking it. I think that's a little overkill on the texture, but here we'll, we'll bring it back down. We'll bring that down a little bit. <laughs> Kind of like get some of that action, like a boy band faux hawk looking deal. It's almost like a troll, you know. And then got some of that to build in the texture of it, and then we'll come back over. There we go. Those, that doesn't have a lot of detail, but that's actually okay. Um, we can do something like that. That, just infer a little bit of something. Um, I don't know what it's inferring, but it can infer something. 
I'm a big fan of using like the optical illusions of art to make you think stuff is places, but it's really not. out a little bit. That. Get that structure in here. And see, now his hand kind of looks robotic and stuff, which is definitely a step up. Definitely a step up. wonder if try let me work wonder that's probably a better composition anyway right a little bit tighter more visual interest to kind of look at it Just do a really quick kind of paint over with that gun stuff. So yeah, overall it's not looking bad. So I wonder if I have... I may wrap up here in just a few minutes, but I wonder what it would look like if I were to come in... Let me put a color lookup table. Let me actually go to mode on the top. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Oh, it's all. Never mind. Actually, okay. So, whenever we do that, we do a LUT, but let me do that. Delete. And let me actually bring in one of my other paintings to get a color palette. So if we go open, if I go desktop, artwork, finished pieces, what color range do I want based on my other art? We could probably do one of these. Get that one. And then here's what you do. Select all, copy, edit, paste. Oh, turn that off. Let's do a color overlay. No, let's do, what would it be? Let's 
is basically we just want the colors. So I mean, we could color overlay, but it actually affects some stuff too. not quite what we want. Um, let's actually do a landscape panel, or a landscape photo. See how that works. Um, so if we go here, we go to desktop, let's go Iceland the reference pack. So this is part of Noah Bradley's free photography reference pack that you can kind of do whatever you want with. You can bash, you can um, do a bunch of stuff. I'm wondering if there'd be one of those with like a different splash of color. There's one with like purple in it. Oh, here you go. See, so here's some just rust textures. That'd be cool. Um, let me bring in. Well, actually, you know what we'll start with? Let's start with a gradient map. So gradient maps are a really nice, quick way to add just basic tone, I guess, um, to kind of give you a sense of what direction do you want to go in. I mean, that's pretty dope. I, I, I'm a big sucker for, like, the cyan, magenta sort of look. That would be good. I mean, that would be, that would be pretty good. When was it? Was this one? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. There's a little bit of brown. There's a little bit of the blue. That's not a bad one. The darker version of it. Yeah. Okay. So overall, that's not... That's not a bad start. That is not a bad start. Um, I think this is where I'm going to call it for tonight because we've been live for about two and a half hours. And it's literally 1.15 in the morning. <laughs> and uh, I got to wake up at like 8 to go do a 7-hour drive. But this was fun. I actually, you know what? I feel a little better about how I can paint characters. Because I was real nervous. Like before starting, I was like, uh, I don't know if I want to do a character. Characters aren't my thing. Um, I still don't think characters are my thing, necessarily. But I do think we got further along than I thought we would, especially something from scratch, just referencing the, the vibe and the idea of Warhammer. Like, mix Warhammer, we'll listen to the Warcraft soundtrack, like, kind of mixes those two things together. So kind of got that night elf mohawk. Uh, I think this is a great, like, start of that sketch. Um, and then if we really wanted to go in, refine it, start doing some cool color stuff, splashes, and, color channels and cores and things like that. Um, I think we can make this look real, real good. Then, of course, you do the fancy post-processing effects. Yeah. Overall, not bad. I know this is going to be one of those I'm going to sleep on, come back to and be like, oh, I want to change half of it. But, you know, getting something on the palette is good. Um, I think it's a good way to start. It's a good way to go. Right now, I would definitely say that the focal point is the gun um yeah i would definitely want the focal point whenever we get further in it to be the face but i'm still not convinced on this like ultimo dragon look like it might even look better without the horns now now that i put hair on the guy if i put like actual ears on him and he just looks like a crazy renegade dude 
that might work pretty good. Or maybe even change like the visor type to where his his face mask is more like a SWAT shield or something. Uh, like we could look like Rainbow Six. Uh, I was gonna say Vegas, but Rainbow Six Siege. We could take a look at those because they they have some pretty awesome characters. Um, but what's real fun and what we'll kind of do next time. So um, if we do that and then like let's if I like come on top here and then now we have our color palette. What's really fun to do um, and what we'll definitely do like next time is we will really start throwing in that brushwork. Um, like perfect example. It's going to be way overkill, but we're going to throw in stuff like... So if we have that and then background would be this. And then we're going to come in here and do something like texture brush. No. Let's do... Where is the water oil? Or yeah, we'll just do this oil brush. And then whenever you come in here and you just start like... You start doing some really cool lighting things and... You know, you really start kicking up the values a little bit like really cool things start to happen um and then it really starts like taking total shape and then you start getting the other weird hues in there that don't quite make sense but um actually i like the, that sort of look you know you, you can start just digging in and tying certain parts in together um make it just look real real painted real oily um now i'm actually kind of interested to see what this looks like like if it just looks better but no i don't know i mean of course i'm gonna have to put ears on this dude But maybe that's like. I don't know. It's a different vibe. You know. Different vibe. I don't know. We'll, for right now we'll keep them. Because I just don't know what else to do with them. So we'll kind of keep that Ultimo Dragon look. Um. But yeah, what we'll do, we'll hit file, we'll hit save. I think that's going to be it for me tonight, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. It, it feels good to be back, at least temporarily. I will be gone for about a week <laughs> uh, doing some work stuff. Work's been crazy and uh, doing some family get-together stuff. But whenever I come back, I want to revisit this on stream. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll turn it back on. We'll finalize it. We'll get it all nice and ready for the art station. Um, so yeah, a lot of fun. But guys... Go check out comedhobo.com. Brand new art portfolio. I got my online shop. If you want the brushes I used on this piece, go buy them. They're $1. $1, you get like 33 brushes. Uh, they're already made for Krita and Photoshop as far as like balance and opacity and texture and all that stuff. Um, but they can be used and imported into any painting software. It's an ABR file. Um, and then you can also just export the, the, the ping files to get brush tips. That way you can edit it however you want you can make it you know pressure sensitive you can make it follow the angle of your brush you can do all that stuff um so i just wanted to give that all to you guys but yeah i'm feeling good about where we're going um i think i'm gonna really add in the dark darks whenever we come back kind of where the gun is right here because uh, by far and away this is the best contrast in values so far uh so i want to try to bring this to more of the piece and more of the area really start hammering home uh the lighting structure but yeah hopefully this hopefully you got some out of it hopefully this was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun for me it's good to be back but yeah go check out comedyhobo.com gumroad.com slash uh for my gumroad stuff if you have credit on there or whatever uh it's a really cool store as well um but then also patreon.com slash wes gardner Go there, be a patron. I do these work in progress stuffs all the time. I'm going to start making exclusive Patreon videos. 
Um, I love it. So much fun. Uh, thanks for all the support so far. But yeah, our goal to be a Magic the Gathering slash Warhammer slash board game, Lord of the Rings, Assassin's Creed, whatever. Like a concept artist in the, in the entertainment gaming tabletop industry where we're, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But uh, thanks for being part of the journey so far. 2019 has been baller for sure. Uh, I think 2020 is going to be sick as well. But uh, can't wait for you guys to know about the project I already worked on and get to see some of it in action. That's fun. But uh, yeah, hope you had a great time. It was great to see everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. And we will see you very soon. I'd like to do this a few times a month, at least. Um, yeah, but until then, go create something. Go make something awesome. You guys are rad. Peace.